Hey guys, last time we saw the working of a forward converter with reset winding topology. This time we will check the active clamp forward converter topology. It's working with waveforms, advantages and disadvantages. So buckle up guys, let's go for a ride. Forward converter is basically a buck converter with transformer inserted in between. The forward converter consists of a MOSFET, two diodes, a transformer, inductor and an output capacitor. The construction of the forward converter is like this. When the MOSFET Q1 is turned on, the current starts flowing through the primary and due to electromagnetic induction, the current in the secondary winding flows in this direction. The D1 gets forward biased. The current flows through this LC filter and it provides the power to the load. When the MOSFET Q1 is turned off, the current in the primary and secondary winding falls to zero. But due to sudden change in current and stored energy in the L1, its polarity changes so the D2 gets forward biased, providing power to the output. So this is how an ideal forward converter works. In real time, when the MOSFET is on, everything is fine. But the trouble starts later, when the MOSFET is turned off. The winding of the transformer are nothing but inductors. So due to sudden change in current, the voltage induces in the primary winding by the equation V is equal to LDI by DT. So normally, the residual energy stored in the primary coil of the transformer has no path to go anywhere and within some on-off cycles of the converter, the core of the transformer will saturate and might destroy the MOSFET connected in primary side due to very high stress put on it. Well, to avoid that, we have to reset the transformer. Last time we have seen that this can be done by adding a tertiary winding and an anti-parallel diode. After each cycle, the energy of the primary winding of the transformer is fed back to the input supply through this tertiary winding. But there are several disadvantages of this method such as we have to add one more winding to the transformer so the size of the transformer increases little bit. The voltage across the MOSFET goes up to twice of input voltage or it may go beyond that as well. So we cannot go for higher power applications with this configuration. Apart from this, there are many methods to reset the transformer. The method which does so is known as active clamping method. In this, we have to add a capacitor and a MOSFET. There are two configurations in the circuit. In first, the N channel MOSFET and a capacitor is used. These are connected across the primary winding of the transformer. And this configuration is known as high side active clamping. However, it requires a floating gate drive signal which eventually increases the system cost and complexity. So, for simplicity, we can go for the second configuration in which a P-channel MOSFET and a clamp capacitor is used. This MOSFET and the capacitor are connected in parallel with the actual MOSFET switch of the forward converter. This configuration is known as low side active clamping. Let's understand the working of this converter with waveforms. So before starting, I would like to clear out some basics of the MOSFETs. As there are two MOSFETs, one is N-channel and second is P-channel MOSFET. The N-channel MOSFET turns on when a gate threshold voltage is provided across the gate and source of the MOSFET. When there is no input given to the gate, that means if it is connected to ground, the N-channel MOSFET turns off. Just opposite of that happens with the P-channel MOSFET. When the positive gate voltage is applied to the P-channel MOSFET across the gate and source, 
the mosfet turns off and when the gate is connected to the ground then the mosfet is turned on so this is the pwm given to the both mosfets initially the mosfet q1 is turned on by providing gate threshold voltage pulse to it the voltage across the mosfet is zero and current starts rising similarly positive gate voltage is applied to the gate of the p channel mosfet and it is turned off the voltage across secondary winding starts rising up to input voltage into number of secondary turns upon number of primary turns as the voltage across secondary increases the current start increasing through the inductor l1 up to load current so the output voltage across the load is constant dc which is filtered by lc filter now when the mosfet q1 is turned off in this case there are a lot of changes going in this primary circuit so we'll break each part sequentially and understand but the secondary circuit behaves normally due to stored energy in the inductor l1 its polarity changes so the diode d2 gets forward biased the current of the inductor starts decreasing as it gives the power to the output so let's divide the primary circuitry according to the time period initially at time t1 mosfet is turned off by removing the gate voltage and mosfet q2 is also kept off by providing constant gate voltage but still this primary current flows in the same direction through the body diode of the mosfet q2 simultaneously the capacitor starts charging towards a particular voltage say v clamp everything else stays as it is now at time t2 the voltage across mosfet q1 is equal to the clamping voltage after the capacitor is charged up to certain clamping voltage depending upon the requirement the mosfet q2 is turned on by removing the positive gate voltage the current flowing through the primary falls to zero linearly charging the same clamping capacitor slowly at the time t3 the current across primary of the transformer reaches to zero now the polarity of the primary transformer is reversed due to stored energy and the clamping capacitor starts discharging the voltage across mosfet q1 starts decreasing as well this reverse current flows up to time t4 and after that the mosfet q2 is turned off so at time t4 the current starts developing slowly at the primary of the inductor and reaches to zero during this process all the residual energy stored in the transformer is fed back to the input supply and the core of the transformer resets so after that the same process is repeated to provide the constant power to the load there are several advantages of this topology such as we can operate the mosfet above 50% duty cycle ratio of the pwm pulses the voltage across mosfet doesn't go up to twice of input voltage as it was reaching in the reset tertiary winding configuration so the stress on the mosfet is minimized hence we can go up to higher power applications the value of inductor l1 can be minimized because of the leverage of high duty cycle ratio but there are some disadvantages of this converter as well the cost of this converter increases as we need to add one more driver to operate this mosfet due to higher clamping voltage the power handling capacity of this converter is up to 500 watts only so that's all about the active clamp forward converter If you have any questions let me know in the comment section hit the like button if you like this video subscribe to my channel and finally 
Thanks for watching.